Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking again about Spark AR, just like we always do. And we're going to be talking about the patch editor. That's right. This is something that everybody asks me about. How do I use the patch editor? What is the patch editor? How do I use this thing? So today I'm going to actually build a filter uh, that I have published uh, actually on my page. If you go to my page here on Instagram and scroll down, you'll see this filter here, right there, right? Look at that, it's called Wiggle. And what you do is you open your mouth, it's kind of taking a lot of load, but you're gonna open your mouth and it's going to wiggle. And I'm gonna play a video for you to show you what it will do like this. Hmm? <laughs> Luke, you're so funny looking. Okay, so that's what it does. You open your mouth and it wiggles your face. So this has no code in it, it's all patch editor. And uh, I feel like, let's just go ahead and walk through this. I'm gonna show you how it's built. I'm gonna do it inside the patch editor. That way you can get an idea of what the patch editor is, how to use the patch editor, what all the little controls and doohickeys and things mean, and then um, you can really get into building your own effects. So the one nuance of the patch editor is that uh, there really is no way for me to tell you how to use every way to use the patch editor. It really is up to what you're trying to do inside of your effect. Um, there are, uh, in, in any kind of programming, there's a million ways to do something. So it's the same with the patch editor there. There's various ways to accomplish the same type of thing. Some people have found better ways than others. Um, but the ultimate goal is for you to just understand the logic of what's happening and then being able to build your, your graphs, which is what all those little patches connected or together are called, uh, to be able to build your, your graphs uh, into something that, that makes sense and for you to logically try to break down and create yourself. Wow, that's a lot of talking. So let's get started for what we're trying to do here. So again, this effect is going to be me opening my mouth and wiggling and and uh, and and my face will wiggle again it looks a little something like this i open my mouth and my face wiggles right open my mouth big and oh my gosh it wiggles so that's what i want to do the first thing i really need to do is understand the structure of what's happening to this effect so if you understand anything about Spark, first thing I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna hide the patch editor just because we don't need it yet, which is Option Command P, uh, or you can go up here and do View and Show Hide the Patch Editor, and then it always tells you the hotkeys over here, so get used to those hotkeys. Uh, whoops, I wanna show it. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna first talk about the structure of, uh, of the effect and then how we use the patch editor to do what we need it to do. So, uh, if you think about what we're doing, we are just taking a, uh, my face and we're rotating it on, on a loop over and over again. Just ding, 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 over and over again. So there's a looped animation happening there, right? So if I open my mouth, that loop plays. When I close my mouth, the loop stops. Um, so that's kind of the basic way that that works. So what is my face that's moving? Well, that is actually just a face mesh. Uh, so what the face mesh is, I actually have another tutorial on face meshes. So if you're confused about what I mean by face mesh, or if you wanna learn more about the face mesh, please go look at that tutorial. But what I'm gonna do is assume that you know at least what the face mesh is. We're gonna add a face mesh to, uh, to our scene here. So we're just gonna go ahead and insert it. So when you add the face mesh, it adds it uh, under a face tracker. So it automatically adds a face tracker and then the face mesh uh, because you have to track a face in order to add this dynamic face mesh to it. So as you can see, my, uh, my face has a uh, checkerboard uh, mesh wrapped on top of it. The checkerboard, um, just like in Photoshop or anything else, indicates that there's nothing there. So uh, kind of like a transparency would when you, when you uh, open that in Photoshop. So when you see a checkerboard, you know that there's not uh, anything on top of it. So we wanna make sure uh, that we are applying our face material here. So what that means is we need to take this face mesh, we need to rotate it, but it needs to look like my face if we're gonna rotate it. So the way that we get it to look like my face is, again, we highlight our face tracker over here, and then we're gonna go all the way over here, and you see on the inspector, and you see in this right side, uh, this thing called texture extraction. So what that's gonna do is, if you think about, we're tracking one face, and we're gonna be extracting this one texture from it. So this is actually just the texture of this one face. Remember, Spark can track up to five faces, which means we can actually suck five people's faces off, but we're just gonna stick with the one for right now. So, uh, so this is my dynamic texture. I wanna go up here to my face mesh, 
I want to go all the way over here and you'll notice that you can see my eyeballs through here. Now I don't really need to see my eyes and my teeth so I'm going to just hide those by clicking these two boxes here again under the face mesh options. Then I'm going to go over here to materials and I'm going to add a new material and you can see that I have this kind of gray uh, material here that's been added. So we're going to go all the way back over here and you'll see that this material has been added to my materials. I'm going to go ahead and rename it because I like to keep track of things and I know that I want to call it a face. So this is going to be my face that's extracted. So we're going to go, we're going to highlight the face uh, in the assets panel. We're going to go all the way back over here to our inspector and we are going to start adjusting the material to apply my face to it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is change our shader type to flat. That's very important and you'll notice that what flat means is you can't see any shadows on it. I don't really want any fake shadows being applied to my texture. I just want it copied directly from what my face looks like so it blends right into the real environment. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to texture and I'm going to choose my face. And boom, look at that. You can see my face there. Now in the camera view right here, you can't really see much. Uh, you can't tell that it's actually on there. But over here in the actual view um, of the scene that I'm using at Spark AR, you can actually see that my face texture is indeed applied to the checkerboard uh, face mesh. So there you go. So now we have a copy of, of the face. So really what we want to do now is rotate it, right? So now we get to jump into the patch editor. That was pretty quick. So we're going to go up here and go to view and go to show hide patch editor or again you can use the hotkey which I would always suggest using but we're just going to go ahead and click it. So now we actually have this thing that is the patch editor. So before I begin let me cover what the patch editor actually is. So the patch editor is a visual programming tool meaning that you don't need to script as in type but you can actually create logic inside of this. So you don't need to know how to type the syntax or the way to type a programming language. You can just drag and drop things and connect them and make it actually do things inside of your effect. So let's do that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to take our face tracker up here in our scene on the uh, left side and we're just going to drag it right down into the patch editor. So I'm going to explain really quick what's happening here. So there's three things that got added, not just one. So let me explain what's happening. So Spark can track. Uh, first thing that Spark is going to be doing is using a scene understanding piece that's going to be finding faces in the scene. So we need to add a face finder because we are going to be using faces. So you'll notice when I highlight this, there's two arrows over here, which we're going to call these ports. So we have two ports on the side. You'll notice when I drag them around, there's a line that connects to that. All right. Um, these ports have uh, some pretty easy things. They're all labeled. Uh, this is uh, the faces. So what this means is uh, the scene understanding tool that's built, in, built into Spark is going to pack all of the information of the faces into this port. So this little port has a lot of stuff coming out of it. This port down here called count only shows you the count of the faces inside of the scene. So this will actually give you a count of how many faces are there. So the next piece that this is actually connected to is called face select and each of these is called a patch. This entire thing is called a graph. So your patch is right here, your graph is right here. So you can connect these together, obviously. You can see that I have these lines here. The cool thing about the patch editor is I can't connect the wrong thing right? Makes sense, right? So that means that this is somewhat like Legos. Uh, there's a really no way to connect things in the wrong way. Um, when you do connect things maybe in a loop sense uh, to where the logic uh, in the patch itself is okay but the loop itself is not okay, then your scene will stop up here and tell you that you uh, have done something wrong. So again, there's no way to really disconnect or connect anything improperly. So play around. I encourage you to play around with these ports. So we have our face finder, right? So we have these two ports, faces and face count. So the first thing we need to do really is select the face. Which face are we talking about? Again, we can track up to five faces. So which face do we actually want to modify? So we add this face select in here and you can see all I have to do is just drag this in here and it connects. So the faces connects to this. So now I know that this is uh, actually going to run through the number of faces and actually select a face and then this output port over here is going to output information about just that one face. Make sense? So 
What might not make sense is this number right here, which is zero, which is the index. So in almost all programming languages, they all have something called a zero index. And what that means is that all counting starts at zero, kind of like do you start your week on a Sunday or a Monday? In programming, you start counting at zero. So zero means one. So that means that in this face select, I'm selecting the first face. So if I wanted to select the second face, this would be one. The third face would be two. The fourth face would be three, etc. So that's just a nuance of programming. Uh, having a zero index is important. Don't need to go into that right now, but we're just gonna say that's why this is zero. So your face select index, your face select on here is going to be zero because we're only tracking the first face. So then we need to pull apart again, oops, let me reset my face here. So then we need to pull apart um, what information we're getting out of our face. So this is our face port. So then we're gonna connect the actual face tracker. So if I just drag the face tracker down here, it could just drop this one patch in here. But luckily Spark is smart enough to know that if I'm dragging the face tracker down, I actually need these two connected to it first. So when you drag this down, it's a quick way of just building this really quick thing right here. So then we get connected to the face tracker again, which is what I dragged down here. And that is going to tell me information about my face. So now you can see my face, face is sitting here and I can get things like the 3D position. So my 3D position, you'll notice on the uh, scene up here on the top, I have these gray arrows that point directions. You notice there's three of them. So that is a 3D position because I am tracking something in a 3D environment. So backwards and forwards, side to side, and up and down. So that means in the sense of having a flat Photoshop file, it would be like having width and height and also depth. So there's a new thing there to where we can actually monitor the depth of something. So that is uh, how that breaks down. So, and they actually go in that order. If you think about it, width, height, depth, that's X, Y, Z. So X is side to side, Y is up and down, Z is front to back. So if you're familiar also with uh, CSS um, or uh, building websites when you're using things called the Z-index, um, whatever the Z-index is, that's what you're saying. You're layering things with the Z-index. So you're saying that uh, the whatever has the higher Z value is going to be in front of the other thing. So a lot of talking there, but that's what this 3D position actually is. And you can actually see it says X. Let me just go ahead and get this up here. When, I, when you click on these, they'll, they'll give you the values, by the way. So if you're confused about what's coming out of these ports, you can always click on them. If they don't show anything, it means it's probably complicated. So we're going to click on 3D position. You can actually see when I move my head around, you can watch these values move. Okay, makes sense. So that's the position. Then you have the scaling, which is the scale of this. So if you think of scaling, it's going from zero to one, meaning kind of a percentage, 0% to 100%. So right now I'm at 100% scale. So one, one, and one in that 3D environment. So it's scaled properly. It's one to one ratio. Um, but I can, if I wanted to change this to two and two and two, and my face would be really big. Um, we're not gonna do that right now. The next piece here is 3D rotation, which is the side to side and up and down pitch rotation. Um, you can go read what uh, all those different terms mean, but essentially you're getting into your 3D rotation. So if you're thinking about what this means, so if we just break this down really quickly, how the face tracker works and how these 3D values work, that means that I have in this one port, three values. I have X, Y, and Z. In this port, I have three values for scale, X, Y, and Z. And in this port, I have three values rota for rotation, X, Y, and Z. So if we go up here to the face mesh, you will notice over here, after I highlight it over here in the scene panel, over here in the inspector, you'll notice that we have things called transformations where we can actually alter the position, the scale, and the rotation. So this again, there's three values here. 3D position, 3D scale, 3D rotation, just like our face tracker. So right now, this is a child. Uh, the face mesh is a child of the face tracker. So it's gonna track directly with the face. And it's, not, it's gonna move and everything just like my face moves because that's the way that this is kind of built to do it. What I wanna do is alter it to where when I open my mouth, my face moves. So that's a rotation. 
So we're going to go over here to rotation just to show you what we're going to be modifying. So if we have, again, we have a face mesh selected over here. We're going to go all the way over here to rotation. I'm going to take the Z value and I am going to change this to eight and hit enter. And you'll notice that my face turns. So I'm actually taking it and turning it this way, right? Um, I can actually take it and turn it this way too if I wanted to. Whoa, really creepy. We're not going to do that though. We're actually just going to rotate it on a loop back and forth just like that. So you can see that my face is rotated. If I want to go the other way, I can put negative eight. Hmm. See? So all I'm doing is just changing this one value, just the Z. So again, you can change any one of these values you want to, but we're going to be focusing on just this one. So how do I get it to where I can rotate this, right? Um, with my mouth opening. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is, you'll notice that I'm, as I'm putting my mouse uh, cursor over these arrows here, they're highlighting yellow. So what that indicates inside of Spark is that when you click on this arrow, it will drop into the patch editor. So we do know that we wanna modify the rotation of this face mesh. So I'm just gonna click it, and you'll notice that it pops in down here. So that means I can actually modify this thing. I can actually change it and pass values to it, and I can rotate it programmatically. So if I wanna do something with my mouth open, I need to add a patch in here that actually can tell when my mouth is open. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but thankfully, the geniuses behind this have already built something. Oh, by the way, and the way that you wanna add patches is you can either double click and it will open up the patch editor, or you can go down here and click add patch and it will do the same thing. So I'm gonna double click and that's gonna open up my patch menu. And you'll notice that there's categories over here. And then as you get into the categories, there's individual patches in here. So what I wanna do is open my mouth. So I think, well, what is that? That's actually an interaction, okay? And here's all the different interactions I can do. And hey, look at that, here's mouth open. I'm just gonna insert that. So when I open my mouth, so if I look and see what, I'm, what these ports are required to connect this to, we have this one here called face. Well, that's great because we know up here that this is connected to face. So what we actually need to do is take this and connect it to here. So what that means, I'm gonna break this down, is that we have a face finder, we have a face select that's selecting again the first face, we're gonna start at zero, and you can take these ports and connect them to multiple things. So I connected this to mouth open, which means that when I open my mouth, you'll notice if you watch this port right here, it lights up. I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually see it. Right? So that's pretty cool uh, that you can have all this interaction that's already built in here without a whole lot of work. So I'm actually going to, because I don't need the face tracker technically, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it because I'm not gonna need it for what this experiment is. So we have, again, our face finder. It's selecting a face in the scene, one of five. We're gonna select the first one, which is me. And then we're gonna see if my mouth is open, and it is. So let's say when the mouth is open, I wanna trigger that looped animation. So here it is, mouth open. So when you think about it, when I connect mouth open to something, I want it to trigger something. So I want it to trigger a looped animation. If I just double click, look, there we go, looped animation. So you have this uh, great ability to just connect these things together. Now when I open my mouth, now it knows, hey, I need to animate something. Pretty cool, right? So now we need to actually animate the thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, loop animation and I need to connect it to something called a transition because I'm going to be transitioning from one thing to another. So let's just go ahead and double click and I'm going to add this transition and you're going to see how this works. So for the transition, there's a couple values here that we can use. So you can see that this is automatically comes pre-programmed with these three values in here. So this is already a 3D if you think about it, um, patch. What I technically wanna do, and I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna make it a little bit more complex just so you can understand how this works. I actually only really need to move that one value. So I only need to move the Z. Remember when we were moving the Z from eight to negative eight, and that's all I really need to move. I don't really care about the other two values. There's a couple ways to do this. There's a way to do it with a swizzle patch, 
but I'm gonna show you how to do it with unpack and pack, just so you can wrap your mind around what's happening here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, and you can see here that we have a progress uh, arrow. So look at this progress. We'll just go ahead and connect to here. So what this means is now when I open my mouth, this is gonna transition from the start value to the end value. But I only wanna change again that one value, that one Z value. So what you do is, again, if you notice here, underneath it says vector three, which means that there's three values that it's gonna be required to move. We only need to move one, so I'm just gonna change it to number, which is a single value. So before I get too deep, I'm gonna use this drop down. I'm gonna show you what these are. So every patch, I suggest that you do this, highlight it, and if it has this drop down, see what options are available. So this transition patch, look at this. I can actually transition from one color to another color if I want to. I can transition from one number to another number. I can do it to where I can have two values that transition to two values, three values that transition to three values like the original one that we saw, and four values. So. What would you need the four value for? Well, what if you have red, green, blue, and alpha for an image? So that's RGBA. So that's four values that you can play with. The three values can be your X, Y, and Z values of your 3D positioning. Your two values can be your X and Y, and you don't care about the Z, like for an overlay that's stuck on your screen. A number value can be exactly what we're using it for here, where we're just transferring from one number to another, and then we're gonna use it somewhere else, and obviously color. So again, I always suggest use these drop downs, pull these things apart, please play with them. I'm only showing you how to do this the complicated way so that you can understand how this all works. So we are going to be using a number and we are actually going to be transitioning from negative eight to eight, right? So that's gonna be doing our thing. The problem with this is, if we look and see what this port is looking for, it is looking for three values. It is looking for an X, a Y, and a Z value to be passed. This transition patch is only gonna pass one value, the Z value, or just whatever value we want. So what I need to do is use something called a pack. So a pack is actually going to take three values and pack it into one, or four or two. Remember, we can use our drop downs here. We need it to pack into three. I'm going to keep it three. So if I connect this to here, this is actually going to pass three zeros. This is going to act as the X. This is going to act as the Y. And this is going to act as the Z. I know that I want to transition just the Z value. So let's just connect to that. So now when I open my mouth, huh? we got our loop. Pretty cool, right? Now it's still pretty rough, but it's there. So what that means is that, again, we're gonna walk through this whole thing really quickly. We're finding a face. We're selecting the first face in the scene. We're opening our mouth. When we open our mouth, we're gonna enable a loop animation. That loop animation is gonna run this transition from negative eight to eight over and over and over again. And look, you can even change the type of movement that it has. Woo. And then you're gonna, we're gonna take these three, this one value and we're gonna turn it into three zero, zero, and whatever value we're passing for the movement, and we're gonna pack that into this one port here. So the pack and the unpack are gonna be your best friend. So if you think about it, anytime that you have values that you need to get to, so, if, so let's say we wanna to get to the Y value here, or we want to uh, get to the Y value of what my face tracker is, I can use an unpack patch, which looks like this, and connect uh, let's say if I want to do a face tracker, uh, actually, let's just take this and do this this way. So we'll add this face tracker here. Uh, we'll delete these and we'll just re-add this face tracker to this. If I want to get the 3D position, I can actually unpack it, modify any one of these three values, and then repack it and then reconnect it. Pretty cool, right? So what that means is you have the ability using any using these patches, uh, or using a, a graph system to modify quite literally any value that Spark is able to give you. So that's really what we're breaking down here is that I'm showing you that we're just kind of just pulling it all apart, modifying one of them and putting it all back together again and plugging it back in. So let's get back on track. Let's wipe this out. We have our rotation. Hmm? It's okay, it's all right. It needs to be faster, first of all. So we're gonna make this 0.15 instead of one second. Whoa, really crazy. Now you'll notice that it's going from negative eight to eight and then just resetting really hard. What I want it to do is loop, mirror itself. Hey look, mirrored, let's check this box. Clink, now when I open it, 
man, we're almost done with this. Like, look how short that was. I mean, and this is one of the more complicated ways to achieve this. So now, really, we have our graph set up. We have our entire graph uh, combined. Now, let's say, let's say, for, well, before we do that, actually, let's clean up this edge. We're going to clean up this edge on this just because it's bothering me. So we're going to go to our face. You'll notice this is our face material. So you'll notice the face texture has been applied right here. So if I remove the face texture, I'm just gonna have this white face that moves back and forward when I open my mouth. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna apply an alpha channel to this to smooth out this rough edge. And I'm gonna leave my face texture off of this so we can see how this is working. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you can see this drop down here called alpha. Just go ahead and check it. If you go select a texture, now I've created this one that I'm about to go find here, and it looks like this. So this is a transparent PNG with a white blob in the center of it, right? I'm gonna open it, and you'll see that that transparency is now on the sides of, uh, of my face mesh. So I don't have that sharp white line. So now what I wanna do is I want to add my face, te face texture to it. Look at that, it blends really nice. Now. What you're gonna notice is as I talk, the mouth hmm, doesn't reset, right? So my face is still crooked. So I'm gonna close my mouth, it leaves it crooked. How do we fix that? Oh, we're so close to getting done, guys, we're so close. So how do we fix that, right? How do we know when the mouth is open or closed? Well, look, we have this mouth open thing here. What I like to do is use this port underneath here, which is called mouth openness. So mouth openness is actually going to give you a value. So these two ports, again, the mouth open is the mouth open patch is gonna give you an ability to say mouth open, true or false, trigger on or off. The mouth openness is gonna give you an actual value between zero and one. So I'm gonna click this button and then I'm gonna open my mouth and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so to actually get it to one is pretty tough. Really tough to do. So, uh, but that gives you a value of how much the mouth is actually open. So what I wanna do is I wanna say, if the mouth openness is less than a certain amount, I want it to be zero. Otherwise, go ahead and run this transition. So, because if it's zero, then it's reset. So. If the mouth openness and uh, is less than a certain value, then do this. Now, mouth openness, now I know this just from experience, but this mouth open patch, when to, in order to trigger this mouth open, has to be more than 0.2. So it's not actually just zero, but 0.2. So to make this nice and clean, we're gonna set this to 0.2, okay? So if this value is less than 0.2, otherwise it's gonna turn on. So. You can see that it's on right there because it's less than 0.2. I'm gonna open my mouth and it's gonna turn off. Okay, great. So now everything's working. We haven't got the reset piece yet, but we have the less than. So now we know that this is a conditional statement. So we know that our value is less than this. So if this statement is being met, right? If it's less than this, then I want it to be zero. Otherwise, I want it to pass this value, which is the negative eight or eight. So that means I'm gonna reconnect these and you'll notice my mouth is shut, my face is reset. That's the whole thing. That's literally the whole effect and this is the complicated way to build it. So I'm gonna break this down just so you can, again, have the logic breakdown of how I've done this if else statement and then you'll be able to see really just how all of this stuff works. Okay. So again, we have our mouth open. We know that we're, we have our face finder. We have our face selector. We have our mouth open. We know when it's open, we're gonna trigger this animation. If it's open, we're gonna trigger it between these two values. So every time my mouth is open past 0.2, um, we're gonna run this thing, unless it's less than. So we're gonna connect the mouth openness. So we have this great if statement. This if then else is invaluable to the patch editor. So the if then else is um, a great way to build 
really complex type of logic as you're going through things. Same with the option switcher, which is a little more complex, but the if then else is great for basic logic, but you can still build some really complex things with it. But what we're saying here is that if this is met, then enable this. So if it's met, then I want it to be zero, which means if it's less than 0.2, then just keep it at zero. Don't move the face at all. Unless it's greater than 0.2, then I want to pass this transitional value to it. So then I take this and I pass it to my X or my Z value. And then it's going to basically just say, well, if it's less than this, I'm going to pass zero. If it's more, then I'm going to run whatever that animation is. That's the whole thing. That's literally the whole effect. Can you believe it? I mean, it's, it's that easy. So that's one of the coolest things about the patch editor is I'm able to take something that is um, a very complex piece of programming in a sense and literally just connect um, less than 10 things together and just change some of the values. And again, I can change the duration on this and speed it up. Let's change it to uh, 05 here, right? Crazy, whoa, really crazy. Let's change it back. So um, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this. There's a lot of really interesting things that you can also pass. Uh, I, I really, really, really can't stress this enough, but really play with these ports. Like you'll notice there's a thing here that says looped. So it, I can actually get a count for how many times it's looped. And look at this, there's even counters in here to where you can run counters. So every time it loops, increase, right? And then let's do a maximum count of like 5,000. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, pass a value. You don't have to do any of this. I'm just kind of showing you how it all works. But now every time that this thing loops, it's gonna count. I mean, I can create a game out of that. Open your mouth for this amount of time, do this thing. Do th I mean, there is a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with this. And this is the loop animation. There's also a regular animation that you can use, a regular animation patch. Um, to where you can just do one. Uh, and then this actually has patches that says on complete instead of looped. So you can do the same type of thing. Um, there's a lot of great stuff you can do with this. The really coolest part about this also, and I'm gonna show you this because I think it's just one of my favorite things, is I can actually take all of these things, right click on them and say group, and I'm just gonna call it wiggle. So now all of these things are all combined and my patch, uh, my patch editor area is nice and clean, right? I can click on this arrow right here and it will explode inside of this. In order to get back to where I'm trying to go, I just go up here and click back to main and now I'm back into my like overall view. So that means you can dig down into these and see how they work. Now you can see there's these generic things, output, out, it's not called uh, face mesh, it's called output because it doesn't really know what it's being plugged into. Um, so let's go back here. I'm gonna do this and make this uh, just a little more interesting. I'm actually going to go up here and I'm gonna make this set for two people. So I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna say duplicate. So now I have a face tracker that's tracking two people, but not yet. First highlight face tracker one, go all the way over to your inspector and you need to tell it that you're tracking face two. Then you wanna go over to texture extraction and you actually wanna extract the texture for face two, right? So now we have face one and face two being extracted. Now I wanna go back over to my materials and I wanna duplicate my material because I need two faces. I'm gonna go back to my face zero. Let's just rename this thing to face two. Mm -hmm. Whoops. I'm gonna go over to my inspector. This is, again is my material for face two and instead of using the first face, I'm gonna use the second. So now my face mesh for the second person will extract their face and put their face on it. Now how do I get the second person's face to wiggle? Well guess what I need to do? All I need to do, if you can believe it, is create another face select, take this, plug it into here, I'm gonna change this to one, because remember we have a Z index, which means that we're now tracking the second face. I can take this thing and copy and paste it and reconnect it here. Now we have all of our wiggle logic built in for this. Now we go over here to our other face mesh. We wanna rotate that face mesh. It's gonna drop it into here, and now we rotate that one. Now we have one. Now we have this effect set up for two people. 
repeat this for three, repeat this for four people, repeat this for five people, then you have the entire effect. So this just shows you how easy it is to build things to scale in this software. You can build an effect that is going to be relatively simple, but then make it uh, uh, modularized with these uh, built-in things, which are confusingly called patches, even though they're all together called a graph, but when you combine them all, it's called a patch again. Um, but you build these patches, like this wiggle patch, um, and then you can just have these ports that you plug it into and you can actually just copy and paste it. I can literally make another one right underneath it if I wanted to. I can add more faces. So that's how all this works. It's really, really great once you get used to it and you get more comfortable playing around inside of it. I can't tell you how confusing this all was when I first started playing with the patch editor. I didn't really understand what to drag into where, where to click on things over here, how to connect values together. Um, there's still a ton of it that I don't understand, but I will uh, absolutely learn along with you and anything that I do learn, I will pass to you. Um, anyway, so uh, that's really all there is to it. That's the entire effect and uh, that's all the logic behind it. You've even seen how I was able to uh, package this up and make it a little, um, a little easier to do, uh, a little easier to copy and paste so I didn't have all those unruly patches inside of here that I was trying to copy and paste. Um, that's it, that's the whole thing. So I hope this really taught you something that you can learn. Um, I can't tell you enough um, how many times that I have built uh, effects using the patch editor after learning how things worked with it, uh, just to try to bone up on it. So just recently I had a, um, an image tracking effect that tracked to a children's book. It had a lot of animation inside of it and I sat down and thought, I'm gonna do this all with the patch editor, no script. Um, and I was able to do so. Uh, it did take a little bit of time for me to wrap my head around how to do multiple animations on the same object because if I wanted to rotate this one time and then rotate it another way, um, I only have one thing I can plug into here. So uh, you have to think about it a little bit differently and put some logic up, um, up ahead of it in order to figure out how those chain of events happen. But it's all up here. It's all up here and it's not really anything that, uh, that is uh, something I can put in tutorial unless you are asking me specifically about what you are trying to do and then I can probably help. So um, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you. Thanks so much for clicking the subscribe button. Um, my subscribers have been uh, super, super great so far and I've um, been loving all of your comments and your feedback. Um, if you have anything uh, that you need to reach out to me. Again, you can reach out to me on Instagram, at Luke Hurd, spelled L-U-K-H-U-R-D. Um, please go there, follow me, try my effects. Please try to build these things. I don't even care if you copy this effect yourself. This is literally the exact effect that I built. It's on my account. You can do whatever you want with it. I don't care. That's why I make these. It's for you to learn. If you copy it, I just, I'm pleading with you, just change something about it. Just change something about it. I don't care if you copy it, but just change something about it. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Um, until next time.